evening. Welcome to services here at Northwoods Baptist Church. Uh, it's a great night and a great evening to serve the Lord. The weather outside is getting beautiful. Things are starting to warm up. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to coming to the end of this uh, uh, quarantine thing. Praise God. So uh, if you have your songbook, we are using the um, Soul Stirring Psalms and Hymns. And you can open up to 243. We're going to sing Victory in Jesus, My Savior Forever, 243. And uh, please join in with me as we sing. Thankful. 
for the Savior that we have and that we can know. Um, 137 in, uh, in your um, hymn book, and uh, we'll be singing this song in times like these. chapter 5 is where we're going to be. Uh, Romans chapter 5. Have your Bibles. Uh, you know, open them up there with me in Romans chapter 5. I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed studying and looking at uh, Romans 5. And uh, we're going verse by verse in the book of Romans here. Um, and we will begin reading in Romans chapter 5. Uh, verse number 1 is where we will begin our reading this evening. Romans 5. It says, But a certain man... I'm sorry, that's Acts, <laughs> Romans 5. Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through 
our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith unto this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Wow, what a verse. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one would die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but uh, we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. One more time, I'm going to read verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in Christ through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Let's pray. Lord, I am thankful for all that you've done and for your word. Uh, dear God, as we look at justification and the results of justification tonight, uh, Lord, as we look at this passage, I just pray that you'll uh, guide through your word, that you'll speak to us, that you'll challenge us. Lord, this is an amazing truth, an amazing fact I found here in this scripture. Help us to trust you. It's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, as we are continuing in our series on Romans, uh, we need to just take a brief step back and look at what we've already seen. In uh, chapter 3, beginning with verse 21, all the way through chapter 4, Paul is giving a, a dynamic presentation of the doctrines of justification and of righteousness. Um, the doctrine is declared, it's illustrated, and explained. Uh, first of all, a man is made right, he's made just right by God, uh, and declared by God, um, declared before God and by God by faith in Jesus Christ. He's made just by God and before God by faith in Jesus Christ apart from the law. So he's already said that we're made righteous and just before God by faith, apart from the law, apart from circumcision, and, and apart from any human effort whatsoever. It is by faith that our justification comes. That's how we get it. That's how it comes. When a person believes God concerning the death, the burial, and the resurrection of his son, and by faith receives that in his heart, God, he counts, he reckons, he imputes um, to us, to that man, righteousness. I love that. Remember we talked about the fact that he now accounts and credits to his account. He now reckons. He, he sees him as this. He impugns righteousness to that man's account. Um, well, why would God do that? Because he's doing it because of his son, Jesus Christ, as we will see. He counts that man just. Now, this is not a new thing that Paul is saying, but, but something, that he, uh, something that was believed by Abraham and by David, just to name a few of the those name two of them uh, that believed and practiced this. Um, but he it was also presented by the law and the prophets. So now in chapter five, verses one through five, um, Paul is speaking of the benefits of being justified by faith. Uh, the first benefit he mentions in verse one is we now have peace with God. Isn't that amazing mm. that we can have peace with God because we're justified by faith? The second thing we see is we have access um, to standing with God. Because we are justified with faith, we now have access to stand. We can actually come before God. What an amazing truth, what an amazing blessing that we have access to stand with God and come with Him. Uh, now that's verse number two. Uh, number three, we now have the ability to do something the world knows nothing of. Now, we have glory even in tribulations. Even in heartaches and difficulties, we can joy. We can have joy. We can have peace. Peace that passes all understanding. In the middle of tribulation, in the middle of a virus of going across our country, in the middle of having to stay at home with our loved ones, we can still have joy. 
In the middle of tribulation, um, we have joy, um, knowing that the tribulations are not for the purpose of destroying us, but rather, um, but rather actually good for us. And that's what he says in verse 3 through 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. It actually is working for our benefit and for our good. Now notice verse 5. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now Paul brings up the very subject of the love of God. And he says that his love is in us via the Holy Ghost. We have Christ's love in us because of the Holy Ghost, who now indwells us. Have you ever really been up against hard questions or hard times or difficult times, and you've questioned the love of God? Has there ever been a time in your life or a time in your home, and, and maybe whenever you're even sitting there at home right now, whether it's on the couch or on the sofa or on the floor or, or uh, at the dinner table or sitting in the computer chair, have you ever saw, sat there and thought, I wonder if God really loves me? Hmm. You ever gone through a difficult time? Um, maybe somebody's making fun of you. Maybe a coworker has been mean to you. Maybe you lose a loved one. Hmm. Maybe uh, you're going through a time that you're sick and you just wondered. Does God really love us? Never forget that as a believer, the Holy Ghost is in you. And never forget how and why He is in you. Well, why is that, preacher? Verse 5. Shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. He's there to shed the love of God, remind us that we have the love of God in us. Now, in this, we are going to show, and we're going to look today, uh, verses 6 through 11, about the great love and how God proved his great love for us. So that we don't forget how he loves us or why he loves us. Verse 6 through 8 is amazing. Let's uh, read that again. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. For scarcely for a righteous man one uh, righteous man will one die. Yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Notice, first of all, the proof that God loves you and me. He gives some proof that he loves you and me. Now, we may be inclined to just hurry by and say, Yeah, I know God loves us because Christ died for us. But no, 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 let's stop and look closer. It's important for us to remember this. It's important for us to stop and think about these things. Don't just go past them. Verse 6 through 8, notice verse 8, But God commends his love for us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Notice our condition. Our condition, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, our condition was, we were ungodly, we were sinners, that's when Christ died for us. Verse 8 means God commendeth. And I love this, I love this thought behind this. It says, but God commendeth. Commendeth to show or prove. God commendeth his love to ungodly sinners. Commendeth it, it, commendeth it also means to place it together, uh, to place together. This simply means that God is going to uh, take a number of things and place them together as proof of the fact that he loves you and the fact that he loves me while we were sinners. God is going to show it or prove it. He is going to put some things together to make the point that he loves you. Oh, there is powerful proof that God loves you and I. There is powerful proof that God cares about you and God loves you, even whenever you seem unlovable. Oh, whenever we are unlovable, that's when he does. Verse 7, For scarcely for a righteous man one would die, yet preventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Um, verse 7 oh, shows a large degree of how much God loves us. Surely you could find someone who would die for a righteous man. Now the righteous here, it's not referring to a man that is right with God but a man who's righteous in his ways. So that's what it's talking about. What it means to be righteous in his ways, a righteous man um, is, in this case, is someone who is exacting. Um, he would pay you exactly what he owes you, and he would not let you buy uh, without paying him exactly what you owe him. To the penny. He is exactly going to give what is due and receive what is due. Uh, he'll give it to the penny, to the minute. It's the precise, precise exact thing to do with no slack, no leeway. Um, not many would die for a man like that. I mean, he would just exactly say, this is what I'm obligated to do, this is my requirements, here it is, and you get exact. No, nobody would really want to die for that kind of a person. They're righteous because they're doing it in an exacting way, but he says, for, a, for that kind of a righteous man, um, uh, surely you might be able to find somebody to die for a man like that, but not very many. 
by chance, someone would be willing to die for a kind, good-hearted man. Generous, forgiving man. That's attractive to people. Um, good here does not talk about his standing with God, but with man. There are good people. People that are generous. People that are good-hearted. People that are kind. People that are forgiving. Um, however, um, good men may win another person's heart and their love so that they would be willing to die for him. Um, so that's what he's talking about here in verse number 7. Uh, for venture, some would even die, dare to die. Uh, for a good man, some would even dare to die. A good man, he may win someone's heart that they may die for him. Verse number 8, it says, but God. But God. Isn't that an amazingly big, small contraction there? The word but, <laughs> whenever it's there. But God commendeth his love toward us. While we were neither righteous nor good, but rather ungodly and sinners, that's when he gave his son to die for us. Mm -hmm. Wow. When we were unrighteous and sinners, that's when he saw fit. That's when he saw need. That's whenever he did the unthinkable and gave his life uh, for us. Um, that's it. God couldn't do anything greater to prove his love. When we were at our worst, God gave his best. Remember that awful description of man crying? If you go, we go back, and we don't, for time's sake, we don't, we don't, aren't going to go back through. But you go back to chapter 1, verse number 18, all the way to chapter 3, verse number 19, and how that all are guilty, the Jew and the Gentile, and how that all stand guilty before a holy, righteous, righteous God. Remember that awful description we talked about in chapter 118 all the way through 319? Uh, we preached probably seven or eight sermons on that one, uh, on those chapters. That is who Christ died for. Those that are depicted in chapter 1 all the way to chapter 3, those are the ones that Christ died for. That's you and me. While we were yet sinners. Wow. That's who he died for. Notice verse number 6. When we were yet without strength. When we were without strength. We did not have, nor do we have, the ability to save ourselves. We're strengthless. We are strengthless to keep the law. The Jews, they were strengthless to keep the laws of God and obey the laws of God. The Gentiles, they were strengthless to obey the laws and their conscience uh, that had seared them and, and kept them. They were strengthless to it. We are strengthless to keep the laws of God. We are strengthless to pick ourselves up by our moral life and live a life that's pleasing to God. You can't do it. Well, I was going to be a Christian, but there's a lot of rules in there. You're right, there are a lot of rules. There's a lot. You can't live a good life in and of yourself. Um, you can't. Um, you'll just waste yourself and um, you can't happen. Um, we are bound by sin and we have no strength. The power to save is in Him. It's not in you, it's not in me. Um, we never have to worry about being strong enough. Don't worry about being strong enough as a Christian to follow God. Or to live the Christian life. Well, why don't I need to worry about being strong enough? Because you're not. Let's just be honest. You're not. You're not capable and you're not strong enough. You are not strong enough to save yourself. Neither am I. We're not able to do it. In our natural born condition, we are without strength. Paul says, and I know that somebody's saying, well, wait a second. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. That's one of those verses um, that's taken out of context so often. I think it's kind of comical. Um, we were... Uh, we were um, uh, watching a sports movie the other day, and the person prayed, Pray God, we know that you say in your word that we can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth us. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't want to get off on too much of a tangent here. God's going to give you the strength to live the Christian life and obey him. That's what he's giving you the strength to do all things through. Not to put a, not to put a little rubber ball or little, little rubber um, uh, leather ball through a metal ring. Um, no. <laughs> I say that to say, um, but we are helpless. We are helpless and hopeless and strengthless to live this Christian life. Now consider this. What we were when he died for us proves his love. Because we were nothing more than sinners. How we were proves his love because we were helpless and without strength. Just one more thing. The fact that he planned to die proves his love. Look at verse 6 again. For when we were yet sinners, notice those next three words. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. 
This simply means that it was when it was time. Jesus died when it was time for him to die. When it was time, Jesus came, was born of a virgin. When it was time, he lived this perfect, sinless life. When it was time, and remember, as we read through John, there were times where he said, no, my time is not yet come. My time is not yet come. My time is not yet come. My time is now already. And he makes that change. Because when it was time, he died. He came and he died. God's purpose from the foundation of the world to save sinners was by his son's death and life and when it was done and when it was time when Jesus came. Isn't that awesome? That before he created the world, before God um, put the little ball of mud together and he spoke the light, he spoke the darkness, and he spoke the beings and the things into being, he spoke the stars, the moon, the sky, whenever he, he put the uh, plants and the animals on, on the ground, but whenever he divided the waters, but whenever he came down and he formed man out of the dust of the ground and he reached down to breathe in his nostrils <sighs> the breath of life and man became a living soul, at that point in time, God already knew that there would come a time to where he would come and die for the sins of that man he was breathing life into. In his time. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. That this was his plan all along. <laughs> so God's amazing love is from eternity past. His love for you existed before you were even a glimmer in the eye of your mama. Before you were your daddy's special angel, his love was already there for you. That's awesome. It, from eternity, when it was time, Jesus came. And Jesus came and he died for us. His death was not an afterthought. Saying, oh, out of sin, he messed up, we better do something about this. It was planned because of his love for us, and in due time, Jesus came and he suffered and he died. Wow, what amazing proof of his love. The proof of who we are, the proof of our ability, and the proof of his plan all along. The second thing we see in this passage is um, what he's done and shown us his love is verse 9 and 10. That being justified by faith, we are saved from wrath forever. What an amazing love. Verse number 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. All right. Um, number nine, verse number nine. The believer, we don't have to fear the wrath of God. That's awesome. He justified me, he saved me, and now he's meant to, well, I don't have to fear the wrath of God. Why? Well, because... I love that answer. My kids get that a lot and ask, why? Because. Why can't we? Because I said so. <laughs> That's a great one. Why can't I have ice cream? Now, I may know the actual reason that their little stomachs aren't able to hold all the ice cream. And all. Sometimes I just get the answer, because. Well, well, let's answer the because here. Why? Well, because we are saved. We're delivered from the wrath through him. Isn't that good? Okay. Because we are saved, because we are delivered, from the wrath through him. Oh, let's explain. Let's look at this. Jesus suffered the wrath of God for sin once. He will never suffer again. Isn't that awesome? He suffered once. Through faith in Jesus Christ, I am in him and he is in me. Since my standing with God is in Christ, I cannot suffer God's wrath because Jesus already suffered the wrath of God. He had already paid the price. Jesus already died on the cross. So it's not going to happen again. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him to come. I am justified by his blood. His blood paid the price that was necessary to cover my sin. Oh, that's awesome stuff. What we learn later on in Romans are um, the wages of sin is death. And this, he paid that price with his death. Okay, because of his death, we are delivered from God's wrath, and because of his life, I can never know God's wrath. That's awesome. <laughs> his death delivers me from his wrath. Because of his life, I'm not going to know his, his wrath. <laughs> now notice Paul's logic here. 
when we were enemies. Verse number 10. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by his death, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Okay. We were enemies, ungodly sinners, and Jesus died to save us from wrath. We were enemies on opposite sides. Um, we were we were in contrast and battle and war against it. Um, I think of uh, in the animal kingdom, first enemies I think of is dogs and cats. <laughs> we were cats and he was dogs. Well, I think cats are more spiritual. Well, you're wrong. Okay, um, he was. We were enemies. We we're on opposing sides. But we were enemies, um, and yet Jesus came to save us from the wrath. We were ungodly sinners. Think about it. We were lost, and He died to make us saved. He died to move us from the category of being separated from Him to now being in relationship and union with Him. He reconciled us to God by His death when we were sinners. Now get this. He died. But he's not dead. He lives. The song we sing, I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I, I love that thought. And the course goes on, he lives, he lives, he's in the world today. Oh, no, no, he walks with me, he talks with me. Well, why are we singing the song? Because he's not dead. He died, but he's not dead, he lives. He lives in us. We believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, that he is alive in heaven. But also, he dwells in us in the Holy Spirit inside. Now, we are his. How much more are we safe and forever delivered from wrath now that we belong to him and now that he's alive and he lives? Wow. We're safe from wrath to come because he lives, because he's alive. Oh, that pro professing Christians would see what we have in Christ we are saved from wrath by his death. Much more than being saved by his life. Much more, now we're saved by his life. This brings us to just the last concluding thought on this. Notice verse number 10. Verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have, have now received the atonement. Okay, verse uh, 10 11. Now that we are saved from wrath, we now joy and rejoice and praise God through Jesus Christ. Well, why would we do that? Look, look right here at this verse, the end of verse 11. By whom we have now received the atonement. <laughs> in other words... We've received the atonement. The word atonement, we were breaking down, we've done this before, but at one meant. We've been made one with God. We have received the atonement. Having been reconciled, we don't spend our time being concerned about our standing with God and where we're going to spend eternity. We don't have to spend our time trying to justify our actions and our behavior. Oh, man, this is good stuff. I wasn't going to go there, and it's not in my notes, but go over to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. I want to read just one verse here in 1 John 4. Verse 17, For herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. For there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. <clears throat> because of his love, I don't have to fear in the day of judgment. Because of his love, I can have joy right here back in Romans chapter 5. And not so only, but we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. We don't have to fear the judgment of God. Wow, we don't have to fear where we'll spend eternity. That's settled. Now I have joy in God, and I praise him and I serve him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think, Paul... Do you think the Holy Spirit knew what was going to happen in 2020 when he inspired Paul to write Romans chapter 5? I would argue that the trials, temptations, and testings that were going on in the Roman Empire and the Roman Church during all of this is by far more difficult more challenging than what we're going through today. I would argue that uh, their persecution from the, from the governmental leaders and I'm not talking about persecution as in don't do it, here's a fine of money. I'm talking about persecution as in you do it, we're going to take you out and beat you. 
I think uh, and believe that they had more reason to be nervous and even the uh, the fact of the, they had more tribulations from verse 3 than we have today. I say that just to say, if Paul and Silas can sing in a prison jail cell because of what they have in Christ, I can sing in my house because of what I have in Christ. I can give thanks and joy. Well, preacher, you don't know how hard my life is. You don't know how hard my day is. You don't know how difficult things are. You're right, I might not. But I do know this. I can have joy in God and peace, and I can praise Him and I can serve Him through our Lord Jesus Christ because of what He's done. Because He loves me. And He loves you. Tonight, my simple charge is a reminder. God loves you. That's it. Well, that's not very deep. <laughs> uh, it's more deep than we understand. God loves you. He does. If you're here today and you've been wondering, I don't really know or don't really feel like God loves me. I'm so thankful that love is a choice. It's not a feeling. I'm thankful that I have his word and his promises that are secure and true. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you're listening and you don't know him as your Savior, it's the most important decision that you can make. The decision to recognize your need for a Savior and call on him to save you. To, to turn and trust Him completely and totally, nothing else. If you're God's child, find hope today. God loves you. That should give us more reasons to joy and rejoice than anything else we can come across. Let's pray. Lord, I am thankful for all you've done. Thank you for this opportunity to love you and serve you. Pray that you will uh, be with and help us today. Help us to just keep you first in our life. Lord, I'm so thankful that you love us first. Help us to love you more. Love you back. It's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining and being part of the service uh, this evening. Um, we'd love to hear from you. If uh, you have any questions or concerns, uh, you can contact us there at northwoodsbaptist.org is the link for our contact information. Uh, and then also... Um, if, uh, for those that are church members, we are working on a new prayer list. If uh, you'd like a copy of that, if you'll please uh, send a message back to the Remind app, or uh, you can contact us, contact me directly, or call the church office, and we'll make sure we get you a copy of that prayer sheet. Uh, Lord bless you. Have a wonderful evening.